I'm speaking to a child star. <laughs> yeah, I was literally with my agent from the age of five, and I've never been with anyone else. Uh, to put it blatantly, I went to schools where people don't watch black TV. Okay. <laughs> you know, so uh, they'll be like, oh, you act. Oh, okay, that's chill. You know, they don't even... We don't know you. Uh, yeah, they don't even care about that. I like, go, oh, interesting. Well, what's the secret to longevity? Uh, authenticity, honesty. Um, I don't buy faces, it's too expensive. You know what I mean? So my happiness comes first, and uh, if it means getting a tattoo on my face, bet. And you were, you landed a role in Invictus. Yes. That was big. Yes, yes. Yeah, you know the nice thing about uh, these international uh, productions and movies when they come to SA is that, uh, to be honest, we basically play glorified extras. I was a glorified extra. You see me on screen for like a minute or so, you know, but the opportunity for, 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 for a young South African man is so good, you know I mean? I was directed by Clint Eastwood. I was on set with Morgan Freeman. It's not a savvy, guys. It's an essay that we do famous accepts. I'll be as far now, Tiab. Yeah, it's easy. 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 Yeah, it's Welcome to Conversations with Garabo, and I'm your host, Garabo Baloy, and this is where we have conversations with people from different walks of life, and they tell us about how they managed to build their careers. Today, I have a wonderful guest with me, a talented actor who needs no introduction. We've known him for such a long time, Kevin Stierman. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm um, well, thanks. Yeah. I'm speaking to a child star. <laughs> I really want to delve into how you got that role in that advert that is long lasting. Yeah. Mm. yeah, it's a national treasure, that one. Yeah? It really is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, how I got that role, basically, um, like how any other role uh, gets gotten, if that's a word, through auditions and everything. But I think initially what you are asking is how did the whole journey start? Um, Fortunately enough, I was eight years old when I did that, so I don't even remember what year that was, somewhere in the 2000s. But I was already like, um, probably like three to two to three, four years into my career, because I started at the age of five years old. Okay. Yeah, I was literally with my agent from the age of five, and I've never been with anyone else. Um, the first thing I ever did was the first ever South Sea advert in 2000. So when South Sea was, coming to the country or whatever it was. Um, I was on the first advert, so that was the first. And um, yeah, things just kept going from there, you know, auditioning, uh, people getting to know you, casting directors, building relationships, and um, yeah. So how, at the age of five, do you get an agent and decide that you want to do adverts at the age of five? Yeah, yeah, well, um, I wouldn't really say I, I, I decided. I wouldn't really say that was a big decision made. Because the thing is, um, contrary to popular belief, I come from, um, I wouldn't say impoverished, but like like similar backgrounds with most black people, you know, on both sides of the family. I don't really come from uh, rich or well-off families or um, families with um, highly educated people or whatever, you know. Um, so I, I was born in Hillbro and I grew up in Hillbro, like in the heart of Hillbro. And initially how it all started was that my mother used to uh, always try to keep us out of the streets because the streets of Hilbo are just so dangerous, you know? And um, school holidays and weekends or whatever, me and my sister used to go to Urban Brew Studios, uh, Koyo TV, when it was still Disney's Cartoon Cafe. Lebo, Shade, and Spiram Charlie and all those people. Literally every weekend were there, the audience members, whatnot. Like, it was our thing, you know? Um, to a point where 
I think my mom met up with someone who worked there and was like, yo, man, this kid is always here and he's so confident in front of the camera. He knows all the games, he knows everything. Why don't you just like get him an agent and see how it goes? You know, it might be a good way to um, pave a better future for him. Because I think also that's initially what my parents had wanted, you know, a way of paving the future, but they didn't necessarily know that this was the way. And from there, got an agent, auditioned. Um, I think this was like age three or four audition for a while without getting anything, you know? Uh, at that time, um, my mother was a single parent, uh, didn't have a car, climbing taxis to auditions. And you know, these auditions, they be like in suburban areas where the taxi doesn't even pass. So your mom must piggyback you from, you know, all those experiences um, amalgamated to it finally paying off and my career getting started. So did that catapult you into having a greater interest in acting as you were growing up, as you're becoming a teenager and so on yeah. and so forth? Yeah, no, definitely. Look, um, uh, when I was starting off, I mean, pre-age 15, for me, it was like any other extramural activity, you know. Um, <clears throat> fortunately enough, that whole thing of it being... Uh, a fame thing or me being a celebrity, whatever it was, I was never put in situations of my childhood where that was such a thing, you know. Um, my mom always made sure that that's never a thing, you know. Uh, made sure the normality, my parents always made sure, my mom and dad made sure the normality of my life was never taken away from me. So luckily enough, the schools I went to, um, uh, to put it blatantly, I went to schools where people don't watch black TV. Okay. <laughs> you know, so uh, they'll be like, oh, you act. Oh, okay, that's chill. You know, they don't even... We don't know you. Yeah, they don't even care about that. Like, oh, interesting. So that helped, like, make it uh, normal for me. Um, I think I'm deriving from your question now, but, yeah, that whole journey catapulted that. And you were, you landed a role in Invictus. Yes. That was big. Yes, yes. Yeah, you know, the nice thing about... Uh, these international uh, productions and movies when they come to SA is that, uh, to be honest, we basically play glorified extras. I was a glorified extra. You see me on screen for like a minute or so, you know, but the opportunity for, 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 for a young South African man is so good, you know. I mean, I was directed by Clint Eastwood. I was on set with Morgan Freeman. I was sitting this close to Matt Damon having normal conversations. You know, um, so many other South African legends were on set as well. Um, you're in Cape Town for like three, four days, and it's just an experience and a learning curve, you know? Um, and for me, at the time of my career, I won't lie, most of my career for me was just having fun, you know? Okay. And um, doing what's God-given to me, because I've never been trained or anything like that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and what do you, how do you feel about American, American actors depicting South African stories? It's bullshit, to put it plainly. You know what I mean? Um, you'll never get a South African portraying an American story. That's true. You know what I mean? Or, I mean, when I started realizing that it was bullshit, I mean, we'd go to auditions and it would be for international film and they'd ask you, this is literally something that happened. They asked me, do you have an African accent? I'm like, I'm speaking in an African accent. <laughs> what do you mean? You know? And they're like, no, but we need a, so they need us to talk like, the people of Wakanda and the strength <laughs> of the Penta shall be stripped, you know? And, like, that's bullshit. Mm, that um, but also, uh, it's a capitalist thing. Mm. I can blame and also not blame Hollywood for it, you know? But 80% blame them, you know? Yes. Because for them, they don't care about our stories. They care about making money off the production. They care about blockbusters. So they will get an Idris Elba mm. or whoever to play that lead role, you know what I mean? And then get us to train him or make it holistically, you know, and be authentic. authentic. The worst part is on set, you know, you can literally feel the difference. And you're like, but we are giving this guy his own car, you guys are spending 20% of the budget for a man who doesn't even know about our stories, you know? So for me, plenty is bullshit. But I think we're finally getting to a place where we don't need that. Mm. We're finally getting to a place where we're discovering that South African and African actors are strong enough to do that. There's so many great examples of that, you know? And it's so good right now. We're at a place in the world where globalization, in terms of entertainment as well, is becoming a real reality, you know? Musically... TV-wise, in all aspects, you know what I mean? So, yeah, we, we, it's becoming better. 
Yeah. Yeah. I think people are starting to invest in Africa. Exactly. Yeah. And we're starting to speak out as well. Like we 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 being uh, we owning our support. You know, like if you're gonna cause someone to tell our story and it's gonna be bullshit, we're not gonna watch that. Like we own it. We're not gonna watch it. You know, and there's nothing they can do about it. Um, thank you to the internet. There's so many options. Maybe 10 years ago, there weren't so many options. You couldn't really just say, ah, I'm not going to watch that movie, I'll just Netflix. Now you can. You're like, oh, you know, I don't need to watch this. So now the game is keeping up with us. You know what I mean? Yeah. I've noticed that most of your characters, most of the characters that you play are longstanding. Yeah. So what's the secret to longevity? Uh, authenticity, honesty. Um, I don't buy faces, it's too expensive. You know what I mean? Um, I always tell people, judge me by my work, you know? Um, I'm, I think I'm te a lot of people can testify this. I never do this for friends or favors or whatever. And if you're working with um, talented producers and directors and people who are able to see talent, um, they'll be able to identify it in you as well, you know? Um, I put a lot of research and time and God-given talent into what I do. You know what I mean? So naturally, it results in that, you know? Um, I always say acting is like playing a professional sport, you know? If you keep on form, there's no reason why the coach is not going to play you, you know? If your form is off, you will get benched a few times, you know? And that's just how the, the dice rolls. Um, yeah. And you played, you very famously played um, Hossi yeah. on Scandal. Yeah. That was known to be a rebel. I know. And <laughs> I don't think that that's very far away from who you actually are. It could be. I'm a very good boy. <laughs> Trust me. And um, you have... Don't, don't judge me by the appearance. I'm a oh, good okay. boy. <laughs> okay, so I shouldn't be looking at the tattoos. Ah, well. Mm -hmm. You can go ahead. Okay. <laughs> I shouldn't be looking at the tats on your face. You can. Mm -hmm. You can. And can you please explain to everybody what the tats on your face are, actually? Oh, yeah, because apparently they look like teardrops. They look like tears when you look at them on pictures. So, <laughs> can you clear that? I don't know. Maybe, 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 maybe the pictures I'm taking are not HD enough. <laughs> yeah? the, the, the quality is not showing. Or maybe it's the quality of the tats. I don't know. But anyway, um, uh, like I was telling you earlier, it's a heartbreak. Um, a diamond uh, saying that says God will rise and the initial N, you know. So also why I got these on my face is um, at the time when I got them, I, I, I wanted them to be a constant reminder, you know, because they each have a story. And um, also I'm one person that doesn't go according to things, you know. There's this thing in acting, like, ah, you're acting, you can't do this, you can't do that. And I was like, my friend, I gave away my childhood to this industry. At the age that I'm, I'm I can afford to do what makes me happy. You know what I mean? So my happiness comes first, and uh, if it means getting a tattoo on my face, bad. It doesn't affect you getting future roles. Uh, I mean, I feel like it could. Um, yeah, it does become a little, it was a little, it was a little tedious. Um, when I was still doing that because now you play a certain role and then you have to sit in makeup every day and they have to cover it and whatnot, you know. But also I feel like a lot of people don't like typecasting. Um, I feel like the greatest actors are typecasted. I don't mind being typecasted, you know what I mean? Uh, if you look at Denzel's roles, they all have the same feeling. If you look at Johnny Depp's roles, they all have the same feeling. If you look at Brad Pitt's roles, they're all just like um, pretty boys with no real essence, that's Brad Pitt, that's how I see him, you know, like, okay. <laughs> no, <sorry. laughs> that's, that's he's a great actor, but yeah, the roles don't have that much substance, you know, like, 80% of his acting is, is from like, oh, he looks good, you know, I don't hate, but that is also a, a type of typecast, so for me, it was like, look, um, I do well with, like, that type of role you're talking about, maybe rebellious roles, or, you know, like, roles with, like, deeper stories and what, well, and I... I didn't mind being typecasted and playing those roles for a long time because those are the stories I know well, you know? Yeah. You can relate to it. I can relate to it, okay. you know what I mean? Okay, that's interesting. Yeah. So everybody, there are not tears on his face because we all know what tears mean. <laughs> I wouldn't get tears, no. <laughs> no, you wouldn't. No, no, no. Okay. I see you've recently just become a father for the second time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Three years ago. 
Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Oh, it seems like it wasn't that I long know, ago. Right? I know, right? I know, right? Why does it seem like it just happened yesterday? I don't know, guys. Like, things are going so fast. These yeah. COVID babies are growing too fast. Right? Yeah. How is your daughter? She's doing well. She's doing good. You know, she's growing beautifully. I mean, um, she lives with people that take care of her and love her. So, you know, it's only natural for her to grow up well, you know? Mm. And I take it that you and the mother of your kid are no longer together. Mm, unfortunately. Yeah, um... Things didn't really go as planned. Um, and things just had to break off a little bit, you know? Um, I feel I did it peacefully. I feel I, uh, I did it amicably. Um, at the time when it was, be it was being done between me and her, um, it seemed like it was, uh, we came to a common conclusion. And then things sort of changed, you know, from there. And um, I guess other facets of a person started getting revealed that I saw, but I thought maybe they may have grown out of or were not going to come out. Okay. Yeah. But unfortunately, we have separated ways. Okay. Mm. And there was a scandal out mm -hmm. that you were an abusive partner, mm -hmm. that you threatened to mm -hmm. take her life and your daughter's life as well. Mm -hmm. Do you want to comment on that? Yeah, I think, no, it's, I think it's fair because I haven't commented on that. You know, um, it's really so unfortunate. Uh, it's disappointing, actually, you know what I mean? That um, someone would actually do that to you, do that to your family, do that to possibly your livelihood, do that to the child as a, as a whole, you know what I mean? Because uh, the messed up thing about the, the times that we live in is that 20 years from now, my child can always go on the internet and probably stumble across that, you know? And um, that's gonna affect a few things. Uh, regarding that scandal, it's absolutely bullshit. Uh, I mean, if you read the story, you will see that it's a tabloid. Uh, they were saying that I smoke weed and I get violent and I get aggressive and whatnot. Please show me the one person who gets aggro after they just had a joint because it does not make sense to me. You know what I mean? What weed are you smoking? You know, number two, other things that were said was um, I used to abuse her in my house, smoke weed in my house in front of my kid, in front of my mother, and my mother would just sit there and keep quiet. Are you mad? Which Kosa woman would stand that? Are you kidding me? You know what I mean? Like, my mother is a proper Kosa woman. Do you think she'd watch these things happen and just chill back? Like, ah, okay, you know what I mean? Of course not. Um, but what I think initiated the whole process um, is a matter of, you know, maybe comfortability in the relationship. You know, I think it's also a thing with relationships. We get so comfortable that when certain things happen, that we end up thinking, ah, this one is here to stay. There's no way he's gonna go. And you forget how to actually treat your person or to consider your person or to actually think about the other person and not so much about yourself. And when things broke off, I feel like there were outside influences, not even I feel like, they were outside influences that were like, what? Ukchwai uh, Pella, you know what I mean? Because now I'm in a vulnerable position, like, look to hell, yenzaganj, yenzaganj. And also, that came from me not retaliating to a lot of toxic shit I was getting on my phone from that person. You know what I mean? Um, I, I grew up in a way to realize, Hore, people know your buttons, and people know what buttons to press, and if they've pressed them before and it's worked, they'll do it again and think it'll work, but they don't know. How, how grown you've become and you've grown out of that and then you don't entertain those things anymore and then they become angry. Mm -hmm. You know, Hori, why is the victim not being a victim? Like, why is my bullying tactics not working like they usually do? And then you do other things like call people and write tabloids or whatever. But, my man, I've been, I've been doing this for over 20 years. I'm unshakable. You know what I mean? Like, okay. come on. Yes. You know? <laughs> so... To conclude, yeah, I mean, that was just unfortunate, but to confirm, that was bullshit. There was no evidence to prove that what she was saying was true. Why didn't you open a case? It's that simple. You said I was assaulting you? Open a case. You know, you said I was abusing you? Open a case. It was Kengoku because I'm a public figure, so your story would have been heard the same way your scandalous article was heard. Mm -hmm. You understand? But when you just wanted to disturb my peace, you know what I mean? And I'm trying so much not to, like, bash or sound like I'm bashing or whatever. You know, like, I want to, they can, they can tell their story wherever they tell their story. But that's just the moral of the story.
it's bullshit, man. And it hurt a lot of people. It didn't really necessarily hurt me a lot. It hurt a lot of people involved in my life, you know? And um, she might not see it now, but maybe one day it might hurt the child as well. Did she have a protection order against you? Yes, she did. Okay. She did. What were the grounds for that protection order? Oh, uh, she said I threatened to kill her and some of the people in her family over some WhatsApp text or whatever. You know, um, I don't want to go into too much details, but to put it plainly, you know, um, after the breakup, a lot of things were done. Um, like, okay, now, because at that time I had crashed my car, so I wasn't even as mobile, you know? And during the relationship, we had a proper understanding of when the child's coming over and whatnot. Things ended all of a sudden, why not? Okay, what's happening? I, I don't say anything. Chiki chiki, I'm hearing from people in my hood. Hey, I saw, I saw your baby mama and your child were here. How? You were in my hood, but you didn't even pass by my house, you know? And then, what's that? You know, what can now spread it? You know, involve the family. Like, understand? And now it got to a point where I, 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 I wrote a text and I was like, listen. You need to stop doing this, 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 and this because you are rubbing me the wrong way. You know what I mean? Do not do that. I guess ke leo pati ni le pegai phone because we pressi la wa fumani reaction ya ke. And to be honest with you, that shit when I read it, it was so bogus. You know, um, we went to the first court date. She didn't even show up. You know, I was like, this bullshit. Went to the second one. Uh, bullshit was spoken as well. Um, and. Uh, it was made null and void, basically. Okay. Yeah. So where do you guys stand today? Do you guys have a healthy co-parenting relationship? Um, I don't like putting my stuff out there too much, but I'll be, I'll be, I'll keep it 100 with you. No, we don't. Okay. You know what I mean? Um, and I say that because I'm not co-parenting with her alone. Okay. You know, I'm co-parenting with, with, the, with the mother of my son as well, and I know what's good and bad from that experience. And um, I guess it's a matter of the other party maybe growing up as well. Because when I ask for other people's opinions about the situation, it's giving, it's giving, maybe she's not over you. It's giving, maybe she's still mad. It's giving, why is she still so traumatic? You know what I mean? It's giving, let's grow up. You know what I mean? But yeah, we, you can take a host, but you can take a host to the well, but you can't make it drink water. Yeah. But I mean, I, I'm, a, I'm a hopeful person in these legal procedures that have been put in place for those certain things to happen, you know? Yeah. Because, well, you yeah, because it is kind of hurtful. Because I know, you know, like, you know, cloud chasing is such a disease, you know? You know what I mean? Like, um, it's what makes it also so hard for someone who is a public figure per se to have relationships with people who are not because these are the dangers we face, you know? You spend so much time with someone, share so many memories, and then they end up doing some cloud chasing shit like this. And you're just like, this is tricky, you know? But yeah, we all don't grow up at the same pace and at the same time. So like I said, I'm not here to bash anyone or to talk bad about anyone or whatever. But no, right now we do not have a healthy co painting relationship. Could it be healthier? Definitely. Have I tried to make it healthier? Definitely, you know? And um, I, I'm a very, sorry to go on, but I'm a very mentally sensitive and emotionally sensitive person. And I've been in places where I've been affected and I know what that does to me. So I'm in a place where I can't allow a lot of things to disturb my peace. You know what I mean? Especially unnecessary things. Yeah. Well, you know what? If you are striving for a healthy relationship, yeah. I have faith that you're going to get there one day. Yeah, no, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I love my child. If she loves the child as well, she'd definitely do that. Mm -hmm. You know? Well, on a lighter note, what do you want to do outside of this acting world that you've been in for decades? Yeah. Is there anything else that you're looking at and you're interested in? Yeah, well, I am doing something else right now. I mean, I haven't really, last time I was on a TV set, it was probably more than a year ago. Oh. Yeah, um, um, I kind of took a hiatus. Um, I got to a point in my life and I was like, hmm, what do I know? How, what do I know? Like, what do I know how to do? And I was like, hmm, 27. Hmm, only done acting, not good enough, you know? Um, let's try something else, another means of income. Uh, luckily enough, I stumbled upon, um, so I'm in an in, I'm in, um, aviation slash private security industry, okay. where I do aviation security okay. and um, drone surveillance, 
you know. So that's what I'm doing right now. Um, I do a lot of um, work with a lot of private security sectors and mines and transnet and railways and doing drone surveillance and surveys and making sure people don't steal shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and so that's literally what I do right now. I do a lot of drone surveillance, and that's what I do, aviation security. Um, yeah, and it's, I like it. It's giving me a chance to be normal as well. I won't lie. That was, that was like another, another reason I wanted to, to do this. I was like, yo, can I, I want to feel normal for a bit. Like, how does it feel like waking up, going to work, wapare uniform, be like everyone else, Utole pay sleep. Like, guys, <laughs> this freelance shit in the ministry is bullshit, my nigga. Like, I want to get a bond and shit. I can't get a bond, got freelance. No. Like, I want a retirement fund. I want UIF. I don't want people to donating when I'm, when I'm dying now. And then it's a sad story on fagaza.com. Or, hey, one hour steaky, copa limit donating. What? Fuck no, dog. I grew up seeing that shit. I don't want to be that nigga. Uh-uh. <laughs> but it's the truth, you know? These are the honest conversations I'll be having with myself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Understand? Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Okay, how did you stumble upon that interest? Um, a family member of mine was doing it. Okay. Yeah, and I was kicked back, trying to see what I can do, what not. And he was like, yo, there's this opportunity, um, there's a sponsorship, there's an aviation school uh, sponsoring people to study aviation, uh, get a remote pilot license. Um, you can get all the other pilot licenses if you want. Um, I studied uh, for like half the year. Um, went into work same time after that. I was fortunate enough that I already got employment as I was studying for that particular industry. Okay. And How did you get employment? The company that employs me is the one that actually spon- okay. sponsored my okay. studying. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah, so they were having... Um, the company just been bought by Bitvest and they were having an expansion, I guess, type of thing. I wouldn't really know. And they were sponsoring a bunch of uh, yeah, young people. Okay. To, to get into this industry. Um, it's quite a growing industry. On the way here, I was listening to Panyazali Sufi talking about it. Uh, Hori was talking about it in his budget speech. They want to put drone surveillances and whatnot. Uh, fourth industrial revolution type of things. And I wanted to get involved in that. Um, yeah, I always want to be one step ahead of things. I was one step ahead when I started at five years old. True. I want to be one step ahead in this as well. Do you see this as a career or as no, a future career? No, definitely. Okay. No, definitely. Um, I'm going to put it blatantly honest with you. In South Africa, my friend, if you want to say you want to do uh, acting uh, or music uh, as a career and your full-time thing, you need to be quite strong and uh, maybe have some rich parents, you know, because you will go hungry, my friend. You will go hungry. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you will go hungry. Mm-hmm. And I'm Did not... you hear that? <laughs> <laughs> like, like, you will go hungry, you know? <laughs> and... And I think because for me, I come from the school of, 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 of original creatives, you know? Where actors were just actors. You don't go to audition and ask you how many followers you have. Mm. Actors didn't give a fuck about social media. Like, nigga, I don't care about that. I care about my craft. Am I doing research? For... But now the game has changed. And um, a lot of my peers or people that I was working with were not able to adapt to that, you know? And um, I, see, I see this as a career because, uh, like I told you, financial security is a big thing for me. You know what I mean? Um, I can't be caught slipping in these streets, man. Like, yeah. come on, I got people who are watching me while they're growing up, and then you they want they must bump into me in a taxi. You know what I mean? Like, ah, horse, go ahead now. Oh, ah, I'm a ranchaka. I'm a rona kalu eh, tamos. Eh, we're all eating aisha. Do you know how that feels? Like, when you go public transport in Chaka, like, when I'm at Mutu Sabon and at Weaver Slap, and when I'm at Uspacha Telegram Nandi. Oh man. And then it hits for Ah, Mara I don't want that. I don't want that for me. You know, the most painful thing was when Vusi Tanda was posting his Capitec card on Twitter, dog, and asking people to, to send money, bro. That's some painful shit. You know, that man gave like 30, 45 years of his life to this industry, bruh. You know what I mean? And to end up like that, like, no, my man, you know? So I feel like as artists, and I always told niggas that I was working with, like, yo, man, don't be too caught up in this. Like, open your eyes, man. Like I said earlier, this thing's like playing a sports, you know? If you're in Kaiser Chiefs, uh, this is a physical thing. At any moment that your physicality can end, and then what? You know, look outside, my friend. What else can you do, you know? Uh, where, where can you put your fingers in which pies? You know what I mean? Um, 
acting doesn't take so much of your time with most of us. You can, and we don't get paid that well. We don't even get royalties. Let's start there. You know what I mean? They are playing Scooty is nice now at half past 11 on SABC One. Do you think those people are getting royalties? Fuck no. Do you think the cameraman who was working there is getting royalties? Fuck no. La Maria Scooty is nice. He like ta la go choma fe la we hile out here. Abelu ngula ba se se PC. He ba ba lima lima jala le tole ya. Yangu na ma research wa zwa. Tinas kamisi. So much mi mi le na mi nyokan kasa ni me ni me struggle hero. No, we are fighting for the rights. Ah, my friend in Lambi le mi. I go hustle for myself. I mean, that's okay. <laughs> you know that's, what I mean? That's a whole different pandemic on its own. You know what I mean? Like the thing that happened with the artists during COVID and whatnot, people were sleeping. I forgot what's that building and whatnot. Like, yeah, like joining together and bending to fight for something. It, it sounds good in theory, but in practicality, it doesn't work. It's not like a Busi o kiro karabo mfana wetsa kna shibo emfana le nakna shibo e ya nong retsa jak amfana ke bo re re tswe ka o sane re ka office ng ELF ye re bona re ba tlo rutla of course they're not going to listen to us nigga let's be realistic you know what i mean so i feel like what i'm doing now is also a way to like um get financial security when i get that financial security i can always put that back into the arts you know what i mean which is basically what they're doing in hollywood as well these guys don't talk about it but first row, the nigga does. He's got financial advice in his agents. Or okay, boy, he made 10 million from this thing. Why else I invest in reading Cesso? Why else I tell you about the money? And I'll just watch us how. Why go? We can push any and I can't even know if anything happens. With more movies you get, you learn how to invest, how to invest. Do you think niggas get that in essay? Fuck no. You know what I mean? There's people who are their agents are taking 25% commission. Tax is taking 25% commission as well. Creative workers tax is 25%, no negotiation. Then your agent's still taking another 25%, so you're not seeing 50% of your, of, 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 of your income. To look at that month, you can give me four calls, when you say, oh, 8,000, 50% are we born. Yeah? But I don't shave you like after seven. Get your horse. Yeah? I can't do that, my friend. I can't do that. So, I don't know, guys. I don't know, guys. So, I say, what do you feel about success? I'm going to be a spy now, yeah? Mzolamba, McDonald ba tata. Ba tata ba sivi ya McDonald ba fit. Amba no apply, but ba zochwa hela. Laka, mabo. Yeah, and um, I feel that's the nice thing also about us South African black people. Like, only mu tuwa ba tu ba tuwa kono understand. That's how I always cope with people. If you walk into a room and try to act like a celebrity or the shit. Um, people who treat you like a celebrity or the shit and will not give a fuck about you. You know what I mean? But if you walk in humble and the same and you're on the same level as everybody else, then we'll start to realize, ah, man, why you to up? Ah, man, why you to to Zhuang Zhuang? But you're actually a good person. So, yeah. Okay. I can go on forever, sorry. Wow, we can see that. <laughs> <laughs> well, in any case, uh, thank you so much mm. for coming mm. and thank you for your contribution mm. on our screens. Thank like, you. we will never forget that little boy who wanted to pay Lobola <laughs> with a piece of steak. <laughs> you guys should stop sending me that on WhatsApp, man. I know it. I know it. <laughs> I was reciting that for the. I don't know, 10 years of my life. Do you know how many times when I was a kid, my cousins used to bully me and do that? Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I'm done again. Yes, yes, yes. 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 I got to a point that I was 12 years old and I was like, ah, man, yes, yes. Hey, man. You know, you're not going to die, man. You're not going to die. You're not going to die. But, um, yeah, no, guys, um, I don't take it lightly, you know. Um, Thank you for having me as well today. Um, first podcast I ever did. And um, yeah, I don't think I'm done. I'm still so young, guys. Like, I have so many years ahead of me. Um, yeah, but right now, I just, I made a place in my life and my career where I can choose what I want to do. You know what I mean? Well, good luck Thank you. in everything that you do. Thank you. I wish you well. Thank you. And blessings Thank in you. that new industry that you're in. You're welcome to come back anytime. Oh, yeah. To talk about literally anything because oh, yeah. you are long winded, my nigga. Okay. Yeah. I'll stories for days. Yeah. So, whenever you feel like you want to talk, 
come on right over here. This is your father's house. Whenever you feel like shutting down the internet, I'm here. <laughs> let's, let's, let's pull a Mac G on okay. these niggas. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> and then people are going to be scared to come to my show. No, thank you. Okay. This is a friendly podcast. <laughs> <laughs> and so thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Mm. And God bless all of your endeavors. Thank you. And your wonderful kids. Thank you. Yes. And the mothers. Yeah, okay, because we love them too. Definitely. And we love you for watching. Please share, subscribe, and like. This is Karabo Baloi, and this is Conversations with Karabo. From my heart to yours, hola.